February is American Heart Month, so it's important to know the warning signs of a heart problem so you can make sure to get the care you need and also practice preventative care to lower your risk of future issues. And joining us now for more in the sponsored interview is Dr. Christopher Valentine, the medical director of Optum Utah. Welcome. Thanks. It is Heart Health Awareness Month, and it is a really good idea to know the risks and who is, who could be at risk because it is the number one killer in America. It is. It is 875,000 Americans die every year from complications related to cardiovascular disease. And so really understanding the warning signs, but then also the ways that we can reduce its incidence are, is really important for everybody. What are the most important things for people to know just to start us off? Well, I'd say that starting by addressing the risk factors that you have. And I know that for a long time we have talked a lot about really uh, trying to manage a, a low cholesterol diet. As it turns out, our, our genetics really have a lot to do with the way that, uh, that our uh, blood vessels respond to our aging process and whatnot. And so I think that one of the big take homes is to get your cholesterol checked because you know the parents that you, that you picked are really responsible for the risk factors that you're gonna have in the future. Uh, it's also important to you know, manage other things that we do have control over like our diet um, related to our weight, um, our exercise, and reducing smoking and uh, controlling our blood pressure. Let's go back to some of the risks, right? Family history is number one. And what else should we be looking out for? Well, uh, look, like, like, I, like I mentioned, blood pressure is really one that can be very insidious over a long period of time that sometimes goes under-recognized. And so it's important to check your blood pressure regularly, get in with a primary care physician, and take the medications that is uh, prescribed for you if you are uh, uh, hypertensive, that is to say, Pre if you have that. Pre-diabetes also, and diabetes also risk factor. Yeah, very much so. And th those are also uh, you know, conditions that really you need to have checked by a physician in order to see what your blood sugar levels are. Because even before a person develops diabetes, those higher gl uh, glucose levels in the blood can lead to cardiovascular damage. And then smoking. Yes, smoking is probably the biggest one. If there's one single thing that a person could do to reduce their risk, it would be to quit. Here's something important to know too. Nearly half of Americans have at least one of those key risk factors. So you mentioned age can also be a factor. And where are we starting looking at around what age is it in our 40s, 50s? I would say that it, it's never too early to check your cholesterol level, but I would say around age 35 is where I would recommend people, I would put a little bit more pressure to say, you know, we really need to establish a baseline. Uh, same for blood pressure, but with higher levels of obesity in the United States, I think that some of those risk factors are escalating even in younger populations. Okay, signs of heart disease. Um, two that come to mind, a stroke or heart attack? Yes. What are some of those signs? Well, for heart attack, we want to really be aware of uh, crushing pressure in the chest. Sometimes it manifests in different ways. Sometimes it manifested as kind of more of an upper abdominal pain. Shortness of breath, sweating, uh, getting very short of breath with exertion. And then with stroke, we're worried about uh, weakness, numbness in the face, difficulty speaking. A lot of times uh, there, is, uh, there, there are these kind of unusual sorts of neurologic symptoms that really require very urgent attention. No, don't wait. Yes. Act on that immediately if you can. And let's talk a little more about what we do to prevent. Well, for all of these types of cardiovascular issues, both stroke and heart attack, again, going back to reducing or quitting smoking, controlling blood pressure, and that includes taking your medication if it's been prescribed for you, and monitoring your cholesterol. And if you, are, uh, if you do have high cholesterol, there are effective ways to reduce that through medication as well. Dr. Valentine, how important is it to talk with your family, to know the history, because a lot of people don't realize, oh, my uncle had a heart disease, my grandparents, and to also speak to your doctor after you speak with your family. I think it's very important to really understand the breadth of your family history and do share that with your, with your family uh, because understanding kind of what their history was like, maybe some of the things that they faced when they had a heart attack or a stroke could save someone's life. Yeah, and when you do have it in your family and do you know you do, yes. and that's in mind, it's important to not be scared, but knowledge is power and then proceed. That, that's right, because we have so much more medical technology at our fingertips today and so much more, so many more options than previous generations do, and we really should take advantage of it. Optum has the answers. They have the doctors. You can talk to them about any concerns, especially during Heart Month, and you can always go to optum.com slash Utah for more information. Make that appointment.
All right. Thank you. Thank and you. thank you to Optum for sponsoring this interview. Still ahead, saddle up for a salad made with fresh ingredients that will make you say yeehaw. Yum. And traditions, values, and culture for family heritage stories. How to preserve your family story. GTU is back after the break. Tile for the Good Things Utah Kitchen, provided by Floor and Decor. We all have these incredible family stories from our parents and grandparents that we love and we cherish. So why not record those so they can live on? Joining me now in this sponsored interview is Doug Jessup, the host of Jessup's Journal and Family Heritage TV Stories. Now, Doug, we've talked about Jessup's Journal before. You've been doing that for years. Oh, yeah. But Family Heritage Stories is brand new. Yes, it is. So Jessup's Journal, been doing it for five years Sunday mornings. But, you know, I started doing these interviews with people just for them to keep, okay? You come into my studio, we'll chat, we'll take out the bloopers, we'll add in your pictures. But then there was this group of veterans that came in. They flew in from all over the country, and they had incredible stories. I'm going, you know, this would make a good TV show. And so we started a, a little bit ago. And then I'm going, you know, I think we need to go to the next level. And so, uh, hint, 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 okay? We went to the next level by adding a new co-host. Just saying. Here, roll the clip. I'm Doug Jessup. And I'm Nisha DeGaring, and welcome to Family Heritage Stories, where we talk about what makes us. Things like traditions, values, and culture. How are these things passed down from generation to generation? Through deeds, through words, and through stories. Doug, you said the words traditions and values and culture. Why are they so important? It's because it makes us who we are. Because to me, if stories don't get passed down from generation to generation, it's as though those people never existed. And so I had you do an interview, okay? Yeah, you she, threw me in. Yes, <laughs> you did a special interview with this woman by the name of Caitlin. And she has a daughter that loved this little music box. Her daughter was named Linny, and uh, Linny passed away recently at the age of eight. And this was a music box that she could put these little characters like Miguel, mm -hmm. okay? And you put it on there and it's big. Well, her favorite was Moana. And so the Mangelson family wants to raise money to put these little music boxes in the music therapy sections 
of children's hospitals all over the yeah, country. Yeah, not just here in Utah, yeah. but all across the country, in Lenny's name, in yeah. memory of Lenny. And you did a phenomenal interview, and hint, hint, there's a little code, okay, going to be in the corner. That's how you uh, donate. So go ahead. Let's, let's see Nisha's work. About Lenny is her joy and enthusiasm for life, her joy and enthusiasm for people and building connections with people and relationships with people, and to slow down and take the time to connect with people, especially if they're different from you, especially if they maybe don't connect the same way that you do. It's worth it. The, things that the Mangelson family had lost Lenny just within the last year, and I thought it was so brave of her to want not only to share her story, but say, this is what we're doing in her memory, and this is how her memory will live on. Can you help us make that donation? And Doug, this is what those interviews are about. She now has that. She right. has those memories, and they're preserved. Exactly. You know, and because, you know, the theme that I look at is, how do you want to be remembered? And it's for people of all different ages. Um, it was a tender interview. I mean, I was in the corner, and I'm, you know, you did a phenomenal job, and it's amazing what people will tell us, but those are the important things that need to be saved. And so we're doing actually a special episode of that today, right here on ABC4 at 3 o'clock, so you can see the full interview with Nisha, and you're going to be able to see the power of stories. It's emotional. Yeah. And, and that is, of course, again, coming up today. What is also coming up is Roots Tech. Oh, yeah. Roots Tech. And that's Tech. a big deal here oh, yeah. in our state. Oh, yeah. Roots Tech has got to be like the biggest family heritage convention, if you will, in the state of Utah, if not the country. And so we're going to be at booth number 1323, and we're going to be doing free one-minute samples. So you get to pick your question. You know, how'd you meet your spouse? Tell me about the first time you drove a car, or how'd you get into your job? Okay, the story of how she got into her job? No, that's an interesting one. I, that's going to be coming up in an episode later. I let you interview me. I like to do the interviewing. I know. I let you interview me. But it was a blast. But I will say this for everyone out there that thinks, I don't have a story, I don't have anything special about me. Not true. No, not you true. You start talking. And we start listening, and you'll be surprised at what comes next and what you leave for your heritage. Oh, exactly. Well, the show is Sunday nights at 11 o'clock right here on ABC4. But we were, what we really want to do is to be able to help you share your story, even if you don't want to be on TV. Okay? So pick either me or Nisha, you know. Okay. Nisha. Okay. <laughs> to be interviewed. I would love, I would be honored to do you your interview about your family. Please go check out Roots Tech. Doug will be there, and you can just dip your toe in, do those little mini interviews, and see what you think. Family Heritage Stories, if you would like to be part of this, the number is on your screen. We are also on social media. And thanks again to Jess Upsternal for sponsoring this interview, that special interview again today, right here on ABC4 at 3 o'clock with Caitlin. Thank you, Doug. You bet. Thank you. All right, everybody. Saray, what's coming up next? I love what you two are doing. Okay, up next, we're in the kitchen. Wrangle your taste buds for the cowgirl salad made with fresh ingredients and ready to take on the go. And stick around because we chat with the master of ventriloquism, Jeff Dunham. GTU will be back in two.
cabinets and mantle for Good Things Utah, provided by Maple Landing Custom Cabinets and Woodworking. Welcome back, everyone. Those are cupcakes, but the best salad is always one that someone else makes for you. So pick up your next meal with My Salad Girl. Joining us now for more is the owner of My Salad Girl, Rachel Bell. And you are dubbed the Salad Girl. Tell us your story. Um, I started this little venture because I was looking for some uh, some better options, and like you said, the best salad is the one that someone else makes for you. Well, so these I are healthy options. options. Yeah. Healthy options. We're going to make a cowgirl salad. What's all in the cowgirl salad? So, should we go for it? Yes, let's okay. go for it. So our cowgirl has barbecue chicken. Okay. So we'll put, yeah. And so here. what kind of lettuce do you use? So, romaine? Um, it depends on the salad. Okay. Um, I'll do a romaine if I have like a Caesar or something. This mm -hmm. is a blend. Um, it's got baby romaine, red leaf. I like the mixture. Yes, when I, I see that, yes. you, you do eat with your eyes. And so you have yeah. a little crunch, more leafy. Yes. And then you have barbecue chicken. We've got our barbecue chicken. Delish. Some roasted corn is going to go in here too. These are all fresh ingredients. All fresh, yes. Yum. Do you roast them yourself? I do, <gasps> yes. Yes. I'd rather have someone else do that. <laughs> yes. And then you've got the beans. Some black beans. We've got tomatoes. Some, yep, diced tomatoes. And so you do this out of your home, but each week you make a different salad. Yep, so you change it up a little bit. Yes, I offer a different one each week. Um, I post on Instagram at yeah. my salad girl and mm -hmm. you can you can order, order right there through that yes you'll order through um, that okay so those are, are peppers yeah baby bell peppers love those Hello, guys oh, look how colorful that is yes. so far um, and then we've got just some jack cheese that would have sprinkled the yummy on cheese. there we've got our little um, this is an avocado ranch dressing. I make all my dressings myself. Do you too. really do? Oh course, my gosh, everything is homemade. <laughs> yes. So you just started this in August. Yeah, this August. And um, what's the most popular salad that you so have? So this one probably yeah. is up there. Definitely that's why I thought we would you, do this one. I have a peach and goat cheese one that yum. I only do when those Utah peaches come on and it creates a little bit of a feeding frenzy. Delicious, so. Rachel. <laughs> I also love your story of why you got into the salad business. Tell us a little bit of the condition that you had and how you started saying, hey, I want a healthier option. Sure. Um, I have been going through breast cancer. I am actually a year out today from chemo. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, and there's a little window between radiation, so radiation was after. Um, chemo and then waiting it's like a waiting game to be able to have that reconstruction and um, I felt good I was ready to do this it was something that was in the back of my mind for a while and then I needed to put it on the back burner for a little bit to go through all that and then I was I just decided to do it. Well, good for you. Thanks. So brave of you to tell your story, share your story, and then to do something else that will help other people. And sure. did making healthy salads help you feel better when you're going through all of those treatments? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay, how can we contact you and make sure that we support you and other people can feel just as healthy? Sure. Um, you can find me on Instagram at my salad girl. And that's how you order. You order through there. I post Thursdays. I offer little treats. Too. Oh, that's right. We didn't even talk about the fun treats that yes. you make. These yeah. are cupcakes. Yes. And this is strawberry, this I'm is assuming. A strawberry cupcake, yes. And changes every week? Every week, yep. So the salad as well. Okay. So. What kind of treats? Is it always a cupcake or is um, it no. a cookie? No, it's different. I've got brownies, yeah, cookies, bars. Did you know how to cook before? Um, I have a background in catering a little bit, so. Okay, yeah. well there yeah, you go. Order from, from My Salad Girl, you get the treats. And by the way, if you order and you mention GTU this month, you get a free treat. Yep, with right? your order this month. With your order. Through so, the month of March. All right, and through the month of March. Yeah. Well, thank you for that, Rachel. Thanks so much. Thanks. Coming up next, the puppets don't do all the talking. We sit down with a ventriloquist. He's Jeff Dunham after the break.
He's bringing his hugely successful comedy show back to Utah March 6th at the Maverick Center. Joining me now via Zoom is the very talented and hilarious Jeff Dunham. Hi, Jeff. Uh, you, but you got to forget. Yeah, you can't forget out me, Walter. I'm here, too, so thanks for having us. Walter, <laughs> I did not know you'd be joining us. Thank you so oh, much you for being part of the interview. He makes me do this. I don't want to do this. <laughs> I have to do this. It's just part of the business. It's like, it's like showing up to do the morning show at 4 in the morning. You have to do it. <laughs> well, speaking of the business, the Still Not Cancelled tour is coming to Utah next month. And Jeff or Walter, what can people expect if they come to the show? Well, uh, Walter, what's, what's the greatest thing about our show? The greatest thing about our show is that it has no social redeeming value whatsoever. That's right. <laughs> yeah. so it's pretty much just leave your brain at the door and come in and have a good time. The world's gone crazy right now, and uh, we acknowledge that a little bit, but otherwise it's just come in there and have a good time. That's correct, right, yeah. And there's not just you. No, there's not just me. There's, there's other guys. There's King Nut. He's a purple idiot, right, yeah. There's Bud the J, the redneck guy, so they're all there, right, yeah and Jose Jalapeno on a stick. Okay, so one of our crew loves that. That's their favorite. Okay, you're an accomplished ventriloquist. And Jeff, do you make your puppets? Didn't I read that? Yeah, I build the dummies myself, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I've, I've been doing building dummies since I was in the sixth grade, been doing ventriloquism since the third grade, so he, he's had no life whatsoever, well, yeah, <laughs> and I will tell you this, never in the history of the world has any woman said, ventriloquist, that's hot. Thank you. You're welcome, Frank, yeah. Well, I mean, Walter <laughs> speaks the truth. What do you do? Um, I'm reading a review here, Jeff, and it says, even though these are puppets, you're not a children's entertainer. The puppets can be dysfunctional. Foul mouth, you're unabashedly stereotypical. Are all these things true during your show? Uh, I got, boy, they nailed it on every one of them, <laughs> didn't they? Like, you know what I, I, I people say? They people say is, you know, is the show is Jeff's show family friendly? Walter, what's the answer to that? It depends on your family. Yes, yes. Right. So uh, it is PG thirteen ish. It's not like you know. It, it's not this terrible, terrible show. There's a handful of words in there that are bad, and we make fun of what's going on in the world, so we don't hold back. And the name of the tour is still not canceled. So you can kind of figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> so you have the Guinness World Record for most tickets sold for a stand-up tour. Congratulations. And what does that feel like? Uh, it feels like he has a certificate on the wall, and that's it. No, it, it's actually it's great. In fact, I have twin boys that are eight years old. They think that's the coolest thing uh, ever. Uh, but uh, yeah, we got that a while back, and I, it just you know that was when we were. I, I'm still doing shows all over the world, but we were going to countries on the other side of the planet. So yeah, they have nothing else to do too, so they come to the shows as well. Yeah, thanks. Jeff, well, where do you like to? I mean, what, is Salt Lake City one of your favorites? Where do you like to go? I know this tour has taken you everywhere in Boston and Phoenix and. and and New York, Salt Lake City, a great crowd? You, you know what? They're always a great audience. It is. He's just saying that. No, they are. Yeah, they actually have a good crowd. No, no you know, it, it's it's that's what I love about my career is that we we can go to any corner of this country and uh, and people come out and love the show. And you you can't put a finger on who it is that comes to the show. We have all different graphics, different ages, and uh, it's just yeah. So uh, yeah, I, and I I love it there. I I love it there too. We don't do any Mormon jokes. None. 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 No, I can, I'm sure. I'm sure there will not be one. Walter, is Jeff a nice guy? Is he known as being a nice guy? Well, compared to who? <laughs> okay, <laughs> like your, like, he, like like your Seinfeld, like, your Chris Rock, your Amy Schumer's? Uh, let me put it this way. He puts us in a box. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, Jeff, that's, that's not it, very right? nice. Uh, I know. No, I uh, no. He's a he's a nice guy on stage. Let's just go. To, let's go with that. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Right. Jeff, who do you think is funny of all the performers? Like I just listed, is there someone that you say, yeah, that's that's good entertainment. You know, Lewis Black has always made me laugh a lot. I, I love Lewis Black, so uh, there. And then going back to the old days, I don't know. You know, uh, the number one ventriloquist of all time was Edgar Bergen, and he was a ventriloquist in the radio days. He had the number one radio show for like however many, couple of decades. And so uh, that guy made me laugh when I was a kid. But uh, for now, no, I love Lewis Black, and uh, I don't know. I love watching Frasier. I love Kelsey Grammer. Uh, I do, too. Well, Jeff Dunham's going to make you laugh, Utah. Uh, he is coming to the Maverick Center Friday, March 6th. It's the Still Not Canceled 2024 North American Tour. Tickets are on sale right now. Head to jeffdunham.com. Walter, Jeff, thank you so much for joining us on the show.
Thanks for having us. I loved it. I hated it. Shut up. <laughs> I knew you would, Walter. Take care. <laughs> Thanks so much. We would like to thank our sponsors of this hour of GTU, Optum and Jessup's Journal. We appreciate their support. Just feels like the right time to do a giveaway. Thank Jack you. Black back on the big screen as Poe, the lovable and unlikely Kung Fu master. We're giving you the chance to see the Dragon Warrior in the fourth Kung Fu Panda movie before anybody else. Hop online right now, abc4.com slash contest. Enter to win a four pack of tickets to the Tuesday, March 5th screening. It's at the Megaplex Valley fair and you get to see this movie that everybody's talking about it's getting a lot of buzz oh, right now my kids cannot wait it is going to be an affair not to be missed we're so get online. Excited. So we're cute. really excited okay did you know that this is a leap year Krispy Kreme is celebrating in a big way and we get to partake in that so tomorrow is it tomorrow already last day yes. of February yep. is tomorrow okay head to Krispy Kreme because two dollars and 29 cents gets you a dozen donuts with a purchase. Wait, two twenty nine. Two twenty nine. They're so much more expensive than that typically because right? I like to bring those to every party. Wait, I what go is it to. typically? What's a what's a dozen? Um, they're good. Are they are they twelve? Twelve. Are they twelve or thirteen? Or I just oh, know. I, I know that I'm always like, oh, that's a lot of money for donuts. I inhale. Oh well, this is a huge savings. Yes, yes gift savings. it to everyone you want. Two twenty nine. Oh wait, it says no purchase necessary. But they also are unveiling four different donuts. The Cho Choco Mania collection is a collaboration with Hershey's. So you've got the brownie um, stuffing offer, fudge cream, uh, chocolate icing, and brownie pieces and rainbow sprinkles. Okay, like share what's happening there yeah, for every chocolate, chocolate, chocolate out there. sprinkles, fudge. fudge. I'll have any of so it. So buy one and get the dozen for two twenty nine. So my mom doesn't get out very often from her assisted living, especially not in the winter because it's too cold. So we made a field trip a couple weeks ago, and we were driving through Orem. And guess what's right there by UVU? Donuts. A Krispy Kreme. It's funny. She goes, 
I could have that. What's her favorite? <laughs> what is she so prefer? So pull over right now. I could have that. Uh, just that classic donut Glazed that you can. Glazed donut. Yes, you don't you, go you wrong with the glaze. That's my favorite. Too. Yes. Oh my gosh. So go ahead and, and enjoy. It's a sweet treat. I'm actually going today because I have to pick up a dozen. Do you like so it's before. when there's a filling inside no. a donut? Yes. You do? No, I don't either. No. I like the Boston cream. Yeah, I'm a purist. Like That's cream. I'm a purist, favorite. too. I just want an original. I'm right smart now. to grab donuts, though, because they're a hit no matter where you go. I know. Bring we'll that box that of donuts. Sign. Done. Mm -hmm. yes. Delicious. Let's bring some in tomorrow. Okay. See if you can go get mm -hmm. those. Okay, still ahead on GTU. Warm up with a tasty beef ramen in the kitchen. Plus, get excited for Fan X for sharing a few of the celebs that are coming to our state. Also coming up on the show, give back to the community with an upcoming event hosted by one of the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. We'll tell you about that when GTU continues. Hour 2 is coming up next. You're watching Good Things You Talk with Nisha DeGuerre, Suray Chin, Dina Manzanares, and Savvy Jardine. Good Things You Talk, where the good things are. Welcome back to GTU. Okay, we can't believe it, but it's already time to think about Fan X, creator of the experience, Dan Farr, joining us now to share the first round of celebrity announcements. We all just said, is it really that time of Isn't year? Isn't it crazy? Yeah, I mean, we're, we like to have a build up for it, so we start a little bit early. We start announcing people, and, and so we're going to be announcing 11 guests in celebration of our 11th year. But Dan, you start planning for the next year, I'm sure, while you're in that fan -X. We are. You have to. Yeah, well, and, and because so many celebrities and their agents want to get their people into our show, they're talking, you know, they want to get ahead of the curve because everybody wants to get in. And so they're, they're talking right early on. Hey, okay, what do we need to do to book our person in? And, so, and hey, the stars are already here, so you're networking and saying, hey, are you going to come back next year? Yeah. Hey, Susan Sarandon, are you kidding? Is That's that the first one. big name? Ah. Th that is. She's, she's a really fun one, and, and she's one that, uh, once again, the agent has worked with us a lot and just knows that people here in Salt Lake are going to take care of her. That does seem like a particularly big get. So Natalie and I just her. watched Stepmom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, and I, I love her. In that movie, yeah. um, that's a big name to have come she in. Is. So we have eleven. So we got to go through the next one. Okay. Are you ready for Quaid? Randy Quaid. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, I uh, got a chance that we had him in our Atlanta show uh, a couple weeks ago. Wow, what a nice guy. I mean, it, I, you never know. You hear stuff in the media, and you think people may be standoffish or whatever. What a super nice guy. Oh, I bet. I feel like he would be, and I'd yeah. like to hear that. Okay, Harry Potter fans will be happy about this. Bonnie Wright. 
Um, and she's been before. So we do have uh, a number of the people that have been to the show before. But like I said, people want to get back into the show as well. So uh, Harry Potter, of course. Okay, Lana Padilla? Yeah, per Perilia. Perilia. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Perilia. Yeah, yeah, yes. The evil queen. Yes. Oh, how yes. cool. People went nuts for Once Upon a Time, didn't they? Yes. They still have oh, such yeah. a fan base. Yep. Yes. I was on the CW, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's so cool, because I'm flashing back to last year, and you had rows and rows of celebrities. I mean, the more, the merrier, because then you get a huge. chance to see all of your faves. Yeah. Star Trek fans out there, we've got an announcement for you. We have, who do we have? Is it Wesley Crusher oh, oh, Wheaton? Yeah, Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton? Yes, yes. Okay, so if you're a big yeah. fan, you know exactly who this is. Well, and Will's been one other time. He came about six, seven years ago, and, and he was one that our fans in Salt Lake wanted for a big build-up to it. So we finally got him to come, and, and now we're lucky to get him to come back again. Okay, Anthony Daniels. C-3PO. <gasps> C-3PO. So we never, ever see his face, but you know you the don't. voice. You do, the voice oh, you do look. know. And <sighs> I, I'll tell you, it's fun to see how people get so excited for, you know, when somebody's is in a character, you don't realize that the voice behind the character, or the, in his case, you know, inside the character, people are, they've, when the fans meet him, they know they're still meeting C-3PO. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not Anthony Daniels, it's C-3PO. It's like uh, Darth Vader, too. Yeah, it's exactly. like, oh my gosh, I've known this iconic, legendary character. Okay, yes. this one's cool because he's a composer, singer, songwriter, actor, nominated for an Oscar for The Rainbow Connection. Paul Love Williams. How cool. Oh my gosh, yes. And, you know, I, I think back, well, he, I mean, he's done so much music, in, in, but also he had a lot of TV appearances, you know, like Love Boat and, you know, a lot of stuff and when I was a kid. And, and it's fun to, I got a chance to meet him in Indianapolis last year. And what a nice guy. Okay, speaking of when you were a kid and when I was a kid, Lee Majors. Lee Majors and Lindsay Wagner. That would be the next one. Wait, so we put them together. she's coming too? Yes, well, you got to get them both together. The Bionic six woman. million dollar man. And so uh, Dan Reagan has a picture of kissing him when she's like five years old. <laughs> oh, I heard about, I remember that. Yes, yes. remember yeah. she shared that? Yeah. Like she's, I mean, the most handsome dude yeah. when he was the six million dollar man. Well, he's one that I've seen him at other conventions and he keeps saying, Dan, I want to come back to your show this year. Can, when can you get me back? It's been a couple of years, and so we're bringing him back. That says so much, though. They yeah. love coming here for a reason. Yeah. Okay, next is Bo, Duke in the Dukes of Hazards. Yeah, John Snyder. And, Speaking and of also handsome small, yeah, dudes. Hand, handsome mm -hmm. uh, Smallville as well. Um, so he, he's a, absolutely a fan favorite. People love him. Okay, and then you've got a voice actress known for Overwatch, Heroes of the Storm. Ooh, Call of Duty, Black Ops. Charlotte Chung. And we, we had her um, probably six, seven years ago, and huge hit. And once again, people want to get back into the show, and they've her and her husband, who's her manager, have reached out for several years. And I'm just kind of keeping them, you know, mix of bringing people back. We can't bring them back every year, but uh, she's a fantastic guest and so sweet. Dan, Dan a, a this lot is of big names. amazing. This is a great fresh start for FanX fans, and so more to come. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Oh, it is just the tip, and. Uh, you know, it, it's going to get really big and, and fanatic again. <laughs> Can we okay. request Twilight? So, Dan, yes. do you know big names that you still have in your back pocket that you're not sharing quite of yet? Of course. Do you? We're, we're, there's definitely a lot of people we're talking to that uh, we'll see if they come through. It keeps getting I, bigger I mean, and bigger. You have to announce it here. You know that, yes, right? Yes, of course. Okay. Okay. Yes. And we do know the dates, yeah. everyone. September 26th through the 28th this year. So mark your calendars for all of those fun celebrities and, of course, all the fun booths and everything that happens with FanX Salt Lake. That's the website. And always, there's a link on our site. Do you buy tickets now? Yeah, tickets yeah. on sale right now. And they, uh, there's some discounts for, for early buyers. Early birds. So yeah, yeah. Mm, Good okay. to see you. Yeah. All right, coming you. up next on the show, it is the season of buying. Move into one of five brand new Fieldstone home communities. We'll show you where those are. You can call them home. And warm up with this recipe in the kitchen. It's beef ramen bowls. That's all coming up when GTU returns after this short break. Don't go anywhere. Flooring for the Good Things Utah set provided by Floor and Decor.
Welcome back to GTU. March is Women's History Month, and Friday, March 8th, is International Women's Day, a day to celebrate the diversity and contributions of women from around the world. Susie Felch Malohi Fao, the CEO of Pacific Island Knowledge to Action Resources, is here to tell us all about the exciting celebration and events happening here in Utah. Welcome, Susie. Thank you, thank you for having us. Tell us first about your organization and its mission. So, Pacific Island Knowledge to Action Resources has three areas, but really it's about connecting people to resources, um, culturally relevant resources. We work in social services, and we have the Pacific Island Chamber of Commerce, and we also have an arts group for healing. You look at Utah, and we have become more diverse, but we also need those resources. Yes. We could always have more diversity yeah. coming in and more understanding. We need the bridge. Right? We, I feel like our organization is the bridge to resources and things that people want to thrive, whatever helps them thrive in this country. Tell us more about Women's International Day. Why is this day important to acknowledge? Well, I think, first of all, what it stands for is that it stands for women's advocacy for themselves and to allow us to be the pathway of where we are today. You and I wouldn't be sitting here without the women that have fought for us to be able to work. Um, in 20, I was uh, Forbes over 50 over 50 in 2021, and in 2022, they celebrated International Days in Dubai. Well, I wasn't able to go because of safety reasons. My husband didn't really feel like that was safe for us to go. And so I decided to put together an International Day program here in Salt Lake, because if I was going to miss it in Dubai, I wanted to do something here in Salt Lake. And I really thought about it and said, every woman that lives here, unless you're Native American, comes from an international woman. And that's the commonality that I wanted to share, was whose shoulders do you stand on? Who, who helped you get to where you are? And there's some wonderful women in our ancestry that helped us get there. And that should be the commonality of what we look at International Day, is that we all come from an international woman. When you put it that way, it is a different way of looking at America. And why not celebrate the women who are here? And yes. we have come from different backgrounds that celebrate each other in different right. cultures. And, and the, we, that's the commonality. Instead, I think it's a way to stop the divide between all of the things that are going on with social justice, is that how can we find commonality? Commonality is we come all from women of international women, and we should celebrate their struggles and their sacrifices that they gave for us to be able to be here. Susie, let's talk about this big event, this dinner, and what has the response been when you have all of these women come together with a common cause? Well, what a lot of women said last year was, we would have never met anybody from that country. We wouldn't have learned this. And so we have table hosts from different countries. They wear their traditional clothes, and they have a dish that they share. And so um, it's usually a group of eight women per table, and it's a progressive dinner. We just move from table to table. You get a taste. You hear about a woman's tradition. Um, and you've got about five minutes, and you move to the next table. Um, this year, we added a marketplace. So we have vendors international that are selling we, from refugee to um, Pacific Islanders, food food, jewelry from South America, all kinds of things. Susie, this sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it, it is very fun. It's like speed dating, except yeah. with eating and with different people yes. and with all different backgrounds. The great thing is that this year we have actually the, the, Greece, the Greek community came in, Italy, Scotland. We're going to have Scotland dancers there, besides Pacific Island groups, the Loatian um, the Filipino, we just, it's going to be a great, even the South, a lady called me and said, the South is a different culture. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring something from the South, so, so it'll true. be a fun, fun event. Okay, who should be going? Um, everybody. It's a girls' night out. Bring your daughters. Bring your sisters. Celebrate women. Okay, we need to find out more information. Do we need tickets? Where yep, do we go? The tickets are, and we'll give you right there is the flyer, um, and it's, I believe it's www.tinyurl.piweiwedd. 2024. That's a long one. I'm sure you'll put it up on the screen. We will put it up on the screen yeah. and we will put it on our website. Thank yes. you so much for bringing International Day right here in Utah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Susie. Now we will be right back. So good to see you.
new home yours. So pack up your boxes, everybody. Fieldstone Homes has new communities happening across our state right now. Joining me now in this sponsored interview is our good friend Kelly Little to show us all of the options. It's good to see you. It's so good to be back here with you. Why choose love Fieldstone? It. What do you love about those oh, homes? There's so many great things about Fieldstone. We're going to talk about a few today, but one is we stand out in design, quality, and just the appeal from the curb. It's fabulous. No, you drive by a Fieldstone home and you know. There it is. And yep. your designs are changing all the time. That's right. One thing that makes us unique is that the different communities have unique designs. So we don't just have a couple of floor plans and just splattered everywhere. So each community has a unique look and okay, feel. Okay, should we Love share that. some Love of those that. new communities? Yes, yes. Uh, the first one is St. George and Fieldstone has not been in St. George for several years and you're back. We're back. And we're coming into a really awesome location called Devario. So Rosalia Ridge is our area on Devario, and it is fabulous out there where it's open air, and it's just by all of the biking trails. So it's on the west side. You will love this community. Are these all Rambler plans? They are all Ramblers. And what's cool about this community is you can get an ADU, a bunk room, or a casita. You can get really cool options in these. So you need to come and see this community. It's open now. So you opened it up. You said so many people came to check it out because St. George is booming. It is booming. And the people that don't know all the things that are coming to St. George, which you and I both know, they need to find out those things too, right? It's really happening down it there. It is really happening. So how <laughs> awesome to have one of those beautiful ramblers. Um, it's right by Sunbrook Golf Course. It's close to biking and hiking trails. So what a great spot to look oh, right there is. in southern Utah. Um, yes. Let's talk about Heber, the crossing. Okay, this is coming up shortly. And so many people have been asking us, when are you coming to Heber? Well, now we are. And we, the architecture out there is going to be fabulous. Now, these homes are in an area where there's lots of amenities. And the, the crossings, if you're not familiar, it has really cool things. Lots of parks, outdoor views, a couple of fishing ponds even. I mean, it's just an awesome That's place cool. to be. Yeah, yeah, look at very that cool. upscale architecture. Yeah. Like you said, each community has a different look. And this is why people love Fieldstone. Look at that great room. That's where your family gathers and you have the space to do it. Absolutely. And one thing that we're doing that's unique is you can still come in and design your own home. So you can either buy a home that we have in construction phase already to simplify, or you can design your own. A lot of builders have ditched that. We're not ditching I that. I so. know you did that. Yes, yes. So come out and design your own. Okay, I would design a massive great room. <laughs> you sure Because would. that's where I live, my <laughs> and master bedroom, and bathroom, and closet. Okay, let's talk about North Ogden, townhomes there. Now, these townhomes are really great, and we only have a few units that are available. But the architecture on them, you can see, they're just really fun, um, and they're super affordable, under 400000 You need to check this out, because you could qualify for the grant program that we have going on currently. So call us for information on how you can qualify for that program and get into a brand new townhome. And these will be opening up in the next couple of months. That's a great thing to mention. If you think I just mm -hmm. can't afford that, you don't yeah. know until you call and ask and check with Fieldstone and see what you can qualify for. That's absolutely true because there are grant programs out there. There are first time home buyer programs out there. Now we have these ADUs which help you to qualify for more home because it can help you with your qualification to get into a home. It's amazing, and people don't even know about these, but we can help you walk through those steps. All right, the next community that I didn't know about and now I do because I went out when they were breaking ground is in Eagle Mountain, and this is such a beautiful location. It really is beautiful. Now, if you want fresh air and affordability, this is the place for you to be. It's absolutely beautiful. Look at these homes, they're light bright. We've got two-story great rooms, they're just fabulous. And again, you can choose from what we have out there and streamline that process. We have twin home single families from the 420s. It's phenomenal. So uh, the people lining up to check out those lots, and it's just dirt right now. You don't yeah, even have a model yeah. home. Yeah, and we people don't. say, I want to live right here because your mm -hmm. views of the mountains That's are right. unparalleled. And just since we were out there a couple weeks ago, now we have homes framed up. Wait, so come do? see them. It's Moving happening. Fast it's happening there already. In Eagle Mountain. Yeah. Okay, right. our last location we're talking about today is Spanish Fork. Yeah. So South Utah County. Okay, now this community is going to be very upscale. Like if you want something with a detached garage, oh, look wait at these a homes. Minute. They're look, gorgeous, look right? Look at the windows. Look at that. So right there in Spanish Fork, on the east side, it's going to be beautiful. We, we have a limited number of lots, but you're going to want to come check this out. We'll be opening this community probably in the next 30 days. So get on our VIP list to find out more about Willow. It's, it's fabulous. Okay, five minutes from the canyon. There's golfing. You're right by I-15 if you need, just need to buzz yeah. anywhere. Shopping upscale chef's kitchen. And if you need a detached garage with toys, all of that available in that location in That's Spanish right. Fork. Yeah. I want them to just keep playing that video. <laughs> I felt serene. It is really Looking serene. At, those are amazing. <laughs> okay, where should people go if, they, if they're thinking, I have to have a Fieldstone home? There are two places. You've got to stop at our model homes or go to fieldstonehomes.com. That's right so, there on your yeah. screen. Go right there and check out every model. They're beautiful. It's like going to the parade homes every day. Go to our website, see the models. 
go check them out. You can't move into the models, but you can get your own. <laughs> I've tried. Right. I've asked. <laughs> Fieldstone Homes, thank you so much for this sponsor. We'll take interview. you, Nisha. We'll take you. It's good to see you, Kelly. You too. All right, Dina, what's coming up next? Well, once you have that new home, you can break out the pots and pans. Coming up, we are sharing how to make a beef ramen bowl and a new spot in Taylorsville to throw your next big celebration from weddings to birthday parties. The look at a new event center to create your memories. GTU is back in a moment. Welcome back, everyone. Now, lounge in style or throw the event of your dreams all in one place. CJ Drisdom with Noir Event Center is joining me now to share more about this dream space, yes. this place where you want to throw your events. Welcome, CJ. Thank you so much for having me. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. a beautiful day to have a neighbor. I know. Yeah. And so Noir Event Center is right in Taylorsville. Tell me more about this place. Noir Event Center is such a beautiful place. It's an event planner's dream. Uh, actually so you come in there it's a big box about 13,000 square feet of space and uh, you can uh, imagine what you want it's a dream chamber so it is a blank canvas and yeah. that is a dream where you want to put if it's a wedding if it's a corporate event That's right. look at that an art gallery yes you can make it what you want that's exactly right CJ, this is the first and only black owned event center are you kidding oh my gosh yeah that shouldn't be you know it shouldn't um, be However, black owned, yes, mm -hmm. but uh, we receive everybody, you know. Uh, we want to make sure that everybody's comfortable, um, you know, safe place for everybody, so. You've had 45 events. Yeah. You even had a luau recently. Tell Absolutely. us all of the things. Listen, we've had uh, everything from fundraisers to weddings to uh, quinceañeras. We've had uh, so many different culture, cultural experiences as well, um, and so we've, we do a lot of outreach, you know, we want to make sure that everybody is, is feeling good out there. So. CJ, this was your dream. What was your mission to begin with to say, I'm going to start my own event center? Well, I love fun. You know, um, you know, everybody knows about Changing Lanes Band. Uh, now we have 15 bands around the country uh, that play in 11 different states. Uh, and so entertainment and events has like always been my passion, making people feel good, you know, and providing the opportunity for people to do. And so New Art Events Center is just uh, the extra step, you know, to provide a space, you know. Now my bands can come and do concerts and stuff, you know. For a long time, Changing Lanes Band wasn't accepted in every venue. So now we have our own space to come and do our own concerts. Yeah. So. 
have that freedom, that yeah. creativity, and it is a one-stop shop. You can do a la carte, but you provide, say, the catering, yes. all the things that you want an amazing event to happen oh, yes. there. Absolutely. We have our reception license. Mm -hmm. I went, you know, it took me about six or seven months to get that, and you know, just make sure that we have, we crossed every T and dot every I for our clients. So you're talking about food, you're talking about cakes, you're talking about drinks, all of that? Everything. You have all lined up. If they say, hey, I want this, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, all in one shot. Oh, yeah. There you go. What makes that so exciting when someone walks in? Because you already have the history of 45 different events. How has that response been? You know, um, we try to create a, a foundation where people feel like they, they have love. When they walk in the door, they, mm -hmm. they get a big hug. You know, they feel like they just got a big hug from uh, New Orleans Center. You know, um, it's a place of, of gathering families. You know, uh, we even have photo, photo shoot opportunities and things like that. So just a, just a beautiful canvas to create those memories. Well, the reach that you have with the entertainment, with the audio, all the things that you need to put together an amazing event. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. We even have Benzino coming out uh, this weekend. What's that? Benzino is, uh, he's <laughs> actually the owner of uh, Source Magazine. He's the founder of Source Magazine. Wow, yeah. you seriously have the networking power yes, with on your side. What has been your favorite event? <laughs> My favorite event was uh, was uh, the kids who came from the BSU, so Black Student Union. Uh, my friend JoJo, uh, she brought in like 300 kids, and uh, and they were like, "Oh, gee, we, you know, we, you need to change the ceiling." So I painted the ceiling, you know. And, and uh, I, I always listen to uh, the youth, you know, and and uh, what their opinions are, you know, because. Uh, they are our future. They are the ones that are uh, decision makers right now. So CJ, custom made events. You want the ceiling painted? CJ will go up there and paint the ceiling. <laughs> well, not CJ, <laughs> but you know. Your team. <laughs> right. you, maybe you don't want CJ right, right, to paint right. it. No, no, no. You don't want that. You know. How special has this been to see this all come together? You know, um, I want my kids to 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 know that their dad is doing great mm -hmm. things here. You know. Um, I grew up in Compton, California, and uh, my kids grew up in Utah. They're Utah babies, you know? And so they get to see their dad do something remarkable in the state of Utah. So. You are remarkable and making your mark right here in Utah, in Taylorsville, <laughs> with Noir Event Center. If people want to call you up and uh, schedule an event, they call you. They go right there on their website, on your That's website, right? right? Yeah. Easy enough? Easy enough. All right, CJ, thank you. Best of luck to you. Thank you so much. Up next, the importance of giving back in our community, how it has made a difference, how you can get involved in the next event. Then the latest item on the clothing rack at Target that's stirring up a debate on social media. We'll explain when G2 returns. Furnishings and set design for Good Things Utah provided by Gatehouse Number 1.
Glad you're watching Good Things Utah. We're talking now about helping others in our community by giving back. And these two gave a different meaning to Valentine's Day. They spread the love to those in need. Joining us now for more are Chase Dreyfus, the co-founder of Vibe and Tribe Productions, and Jordan Hamill, the owner of Top Shelf SLC. And there is a lot to talk about. You two are up to some really incredible things right here in our state. Chase, let's start with you. Tell us all about Vibe and Tribe, why it got started. Um, so Vibe and Tribe... Um with my friend Connie Daniels, we started it last summer. We had a lot of friends sort of going through some difficulties, some hardship, and we sort of came about thinking, you know, um, you know, you find your people, and it doesn't matter what they do or what they have. If there's a connection, that's what it is. And so the motto that Connie came up with is, "Elevate your vibe, you'll find your tribe." And it sort of um, it spurred into doing a birthday party, to doing those things, to really producing things that bring good groups of people together. It doesn't matter where you are. I like that. Elevate so. your vibe, then you find your tribe. You'll find your tribe. And yeah. you have you found yours? Yes. You found your tribe, yes. and you got them together, and you have lots of connections. And you said, "Now let's give back." What did yeah, you do Yeah, that's next? always been ingrained in me yeah. to give back. Like my dad raised me. You save a third, you spend a third, and you give a third away. But even if there are times where you can't give it in a financial means, it doesn't mean you can't give your time. And and so Valentine's Day, you know, is rolling around and I, you know, haven't had a significant other in a while and that sort of can be a day where it's like, oh, poor me. And instead of letting my mind go there, I was like, you know what, love is spreading. Let's acknowledge some people downtown. So uh, good friends of ours, Jimmy and Vanessa, who own Weekend Degenerates, a local fashion brand, um, called him. He had some extra beanies. She had some hand warmers. I had a little bit of cash. We needed bags to put them in, so we went by Jordan's store. And um, we handed out 25 beanies downtown in these bright colors. And um, you saw in the evening, we drove around. There were people in these beanies. And, and this is on Valentine's on Day? On Valentine's Day, But what yes. a cool way to spend that day mm -hmm. and take the pressure off and get outside of yourself, 100%. serve someone else. What was your big takeaway interacting with people? Um, to realize when you're in a situation like that of despair, um, that they didn't realize it was Valentine's Day. You don't really realize, I think, a date, you know, when, when you're living a life like that. So it was such gratitude. Uh, Jordan could speak to, I know he uh, encountered some people who. Yeah, Jordan, jump yeah. in and talk about the video we're watching. Were you one of those handing out the bags? Yeah, we were handing them out, and it was really nice just to see how grateful people were. And I didn't know that there was money in it. So, like, one lady <laughs> ended up coming up to us and thanking us, and I was just like, yeah, this is what it's about. Just, I mean, I wanted to give you a beanie to be warm and just say happy Valentine's Day, but at the same time, it was. A little bit more giving, and they're very grateful. For How that, inspiring! So. Can we come with you guys the next time you go? Absolutely, and back? It's, pay it forward. Yes, right? yeah. and Top Shelf opened when downtown? Uh, 2019. Uh, we do sneakers and clothes and accessories, and it's just been a passion of mine forever, and it's fun. Honestly. Chase, obviously that made a lot of people's Valentine's Day, but what did it do for all of you handing out the bags? Right? Because sometimes I think you reap more of the benefit than even person getting the bags. For me, it was getting my friends involved because nothing, if you can bring a little bit of happiness, whatever it is, or seeing others succeed is the most fulfilling almost to me. But I, I went to bed that evening feeling full, really just in every sense of the word. So, you know, and, and knowing that it, you know, that spread it that much further. And I think, you know, Others did too. Yeah, and wanting to continue of and to grow, so yes. more chances to get back and Whenever connect. Possible. So Absolutely. what's coming up for the two of you? So we're doing a pop-up um, at Jordan's store on um, March 10th, and uh, Whitney Rose is going to host it with Jordan. And just for people to come in and see the shop, you know, buy Wild Rose Beauty. We'll have some of their products there. Weekend Degenerates will have a little pop-up. Um, so yeah, that'll be. The next sort of thing. So with that's that. coming up on March 10th. Everybody, yep. mark your calendars. Anyone can show up? Anybody can show okay, up. Okay, so that's for anybody yeah, watching. Yeah. Also, coming up April 19th, Ballet West Spring Soiree. Yeah, so I'm on the board of Ballet West, and uh, the Spring Soiree is their annual event that's just fantastic. And I'm co chairing it this year with Kim Hagler. And um, it's a wonderful, just wonderful event. And so to learn more, you can go to Ballet West. And um, it's one of the oldest art organizations in the state. And, you know, it's the original Nutcracker. It's a really impressive organization. Oh, we love supporting them. Yeah. And we love Adam when he comes on. Yeah. And isn't the spring soiree when you're out like on the rooftop and you get to mix and mingle with dancers? It's dinner on the stage, and so they're dancing around you. There's live Wait, auction. Are it's you kidding? No, it's real. It's a really special event. Sign so, us yeah. up for, for everything. Yes. Part of, wait, yes. are you developing a new reality show? Do we tease that with our viewers? 
We're working on it. Yeah, Tony. Was I allowed to say that? Yes, yes. No. Tony. So yeah, I'm producing and starring in a reality show based here in Salt Lake City. I've developed it with Tony Vanuku, and it is really a cast of characters, all ages. But the commonality is that they're authentic, showing up, being unapologetically yourself. So we're in the development phase right now, and we're going to take it out and meet with some streaming networks and all the major networks in about four to six weeks. So stay tuned. That's exciting. Big things ahead. I feel it. Oh, this is just the beginning. All right, everybody, look at your screen for all those events coming up. Be part of Vibe and Tribe. We'll link you to their info on our website, abc4.com slash GTU. Thanks, you too. Thanks for having us. Back in the community. Inspiring. Up next, grab the chopsticks and your spoon. We're sharing the recipe to make beef ramen bowls. That'll warm you up. GTU, back after this. Welcome back, everyone. Warm up on a cold winter's day with a ramen bowl you can make at home. Here in the sponsored segment is Jennifer Burns with the Utah Beef Council <laughs> to share the recipe. Hi, Hi Jennifer. Hello, Saray. It's always fun to cook with you in the kitchen. I love being in the kitchen with you because I love <laughs> everything that you cook. Thank you so much. And this is a simple one. And we're, you know, we're going to take just a little hint from the old college days yes. of the ramen, but we're taking it up a notch. We're okay. building these to a whole nother level of ramen bowls. I'm not mad about that because I love some ramen. I always I have some too. in my home. So yeah. how do we get started? Okay, over here in our pot, we have got, we, I brown up some ground beef. That's one way that we're just gonna switch this up, add a bunch of protein and a lot of flavor to it. And the little packet that comes in there, Toss it. We oh, don't we don't even it. use that. We don't even need that one. Okay. Yeah, we're going to flavor it a different way, and that one has a lot of sodium. I'm using a low-sodium soy sauce is what you want to add. And to start that um, soray, I had some ginger and garlic in there. Sauté that with that ground beef. So we're making it healthier. 
in a sense, a, a little bit healthier of cutting down a little bit on the sodium because of using a low sodium soy sauce, um, just adding a lot of flavor with a natural ingredients like garlic, like ginger. I love ginger. Such a, it just adds such a, a great flavor. This is comfort food it for is. me. It is. For sure. Totally. And then I added just a, a little touch of sesame oil when we browned up that ground beef. And then of course you're going to add, um, you know, some water to that. I brought it up to a boil and then just let it simmer. So it's just been hanging out. And look at that. That's just, that's comfort right there. It is. And so mm -hmm. we're not using any broth, but because we browned the beef, the yep. flavor from that is making our, the flavor of our soup. Exactly. And the sesame oil and the low sodium soy sauce. And then I added water. So we built it just in a different way um, with a lot of, like I said, more natural flavors. Okay. I'm going to plate some for you. Oh my gosh, please. <laughs> okay. We've got the noodles. We've got the ground beef. We've got the ginger and the garlic and everything that we just talked about. And then right over here, I'm going to pour some of the broth in. And this isn't on the mm. recipe, but I wanted to show, do something like add in some fresh mushrooms or something like that. Okay. Or any kind of a veggie that you want to add in here. Feel free. Make it your own. And so you can even have the broth cook the mushrooms. Absolutely. Or put, just put the broth in like this is really, really hot. Okay. So I just put the mushrooms in and then it kind of keeps a little bit more of that texture where it's not so soft and soggy. Oh, Jennifer, I good? love some good ramen. Okay, we're on our way. Should I okay. add the mushrooms yeah, for you? Yeah, let's add okay. that. Let's go ahead and put the mushrooms. And right over here, I've got a hard boiled egg. Ooh, Are so you you're from? going traditional, yes. I am, I am. So I'm gonna take that hard boiled egg. We'll just build this bowl for you. And then a little pop of green and fresh of some green onions. Do you like cilantro? I'm not a fan of cilantro, okay. we'll actually. That yeah. And that's why I put these on the side, so everybody can kind of make their own. Mm -hmm. I'll just put in the green onions there. Look how pretty that, that looks. That is nice. Oh my gosh, and I'm kind of battling a little congestion, and okay. this, oh my gosh, would be so good at home. This is perfect for something like that. If you, and, and just to warm up, and to have an inexpensive meal that you can you know, make for yourself, but or everybody can eat together. And you changed it up a little bit, added the protein, and yep. then the egg, more protein. I need to taste that broth. Can okay, I? okay. I'm gonna hand it to you. Hand it to me, and I want to taste the soup. Now this recipe, and mm -hmm. many others at utahbeef.org, and you know, there's lots of good mm -hmm. soups and stews and chilies on there too. Is that, oh my gosh, I love it. To okay, you. I'm gonna you. take the whole thing. <laughs> Jennifer, thank her. you so much. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna make this at home. All right, thanks to the Utah Beef Council for sponsoring this recipe. Yes. All right. Thanks. All right, Gigi, we'll be right back after the short break.
We want to thank our sponsors for this hour of GTU Today. Fieldstone Homes at the Utah Beef Council. So excited for this movie. Jack Black is back on the big screen as Poe, the lovable and unlikely kung fu master. We are giving you the chance to see the Dragon Warrior in the fourth Kung Fu Panda movie. Before anyone else, just hop online to abc4.com slash contest to enter to win a four-pack of tickets to the Tuesday, March 5th screening at Megaplex Valley Fair Mall. Today is the very last day to enter and good luck. Let's do another giveaway. Let's Why do. Why not? This could be your chance to visit the happiest place on earth this year. We are giving away a two-night stay at Disneyland Resort Hotel and four three-day, one park per day tickets. That's just the grand prize. Hop online to abc4.com slash contest to enter to win. See the rules and also check out all of those runner-up prizes as well. So, I mean, we're the Oprah show. You get a prize. You and get a car. You get a prize. You get a movie. You get a trip to Disneyland. And you maybe get a new downtown. Have you seen what jazz owner Ryan Smith has reimagined when it comes to Salt Lake City? No. Okay, so he posted this on Twitter or X and lots of people talking about it. Take a look at this. Take it in for just a second. Okay, so, explain what we're so seeing. So what you see is a new walkable district with a Utah jazz arena that's been redone mm -hmm. in the center. The arena is sleeker, it's more modern. Look at that architectural design in that rendering, and the Utah Jazz note is lit up on the facade. I right want to go there. I do too. You like Don't this? Okay. Like it's this. a little futuristic. So what is the arena? So what does that mean? The, well, that will be where the Delta Center would be gone, and this is what oh, takes its place. What? So then around it would be the walkable center for nightlife with giant screens highlighting the jazz in action, sports bars, restaurants. Looks kind of like a hard rock cafe right there. So this is what Smith says. Downtown Salt Lake City, heart of Utah. Our efforts are not just about the arena, but revitalizing downtown, and it desperately needs an investment. Imagine an experience like this with NBA and NHL at its yes. core. Yes. So here's what I think they're on to is the being able to just walk everywhere, walking to a game, walking to a bar, walking to a restaurant, because we do that in other cities. We can do that in New York, but you I don't really. I think Denver, you can do that too, right? And yes, I love you can. that. Yeah. Don't you love that? There's something about it. But here downtown, we don't really do that. We don't like bar hop, restaurant hop, we take an Uber, we park, and we'll go like a block or two, but we're not in that habit here. This is so much more of an entertainment district. It's more inviting. And how great would that be in time for maybe the Olympics when it comes here? So the Smith Entertainment Hopefully. Group and Salt Lake City leaders said in a joint statement they're working really hard to keep the Utah Jazz downtown. Something like this would do that, but also attract an NHL team to the core of the city. Now, do we have that yet? No. Expansion for NHL teams are a long way out, but experts have placed Salt Lake City as a favorite, and several NHL All-Stars have now approved of Salt Lake City getting a team. And so that could be in the future. Correct me if I'm wrong, though, but you have to have a place for the team before a team even thinks about moving, thinks about coming here to Utah. If you don't have a place for them to play, why would you come? If you build it. What's the commitment? So they will come. Do you two like, do you build say, dreams? I'm nostalgic and I like downtown the way it is, or you say, no, I can well, reimagine it re just like that? But my other question is spanning from what to what? Like, I would love to know, like, dimensions, streets, how big is this? What would be wiped out? And how long would well, this take? And Dina, the city has to be part of this. This The city has to approve and agree and also put some money into the game. Well, if he's so got we'll the money, what, let's, let's do, do it. Let's do what happens next. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like it, too. I do get nostalgic. Nostalgic though. Sometimes I miss Crossroads Mall and the ZCMI oh, Center. I remember that. I miss Cottonwood Mall too. See, I don't so, know of yeah, which you all are talking but about. But you've evolved and you're okay. And I you will continue on. to evolve. So yeah, I vote yes. I okay. want to go with whatever was the rendering. <laughs> I, I will go to right there. <laughs> okay, would you buy into Target dresses? There is a collection that has caused quite the debate, stirring some controversy, and there's no right or wrong answer. It's just how you feel about these dresses. So a Michigan mom, she goes and looks and she's like, oh my gosh, these are cute dresses for my seven and 10 year old. But then she looks a little closer and there are these cutouts in the on middle, the side. on the side. Oh, I have a dress like I mean, that. those are popular right but, now. But yeah. for seven and 10 year olds, right? Uh, so yeah. we're talking about younger kids. This is a mom who does not dress her or allows her kids to wear bikinis, a little bit more conservative. But what do you think? Like, I, I look, obviously I have girls of that, uh, a girl of that age. And I think it's cute, like even off the shoulder or a little. 
So if Eleanor said, I would like that dress, you would say? I would be okay with yes. it because she doesn't wear dresses anyway. Well, no. it's, it's a barely little side cutout, little... but do you typically see those right now in women's and adult fashion? You do. Yes, so it's, very popular. it's bleeding into children's fashion. This is a that. hard one for me. I can't really wrap my head around having daughters. All I know is boy <laughs> stuff, so I'm, I don't know. I am so, so can't decide. I, I did have daughters, and I now, I mean, they're past that age, but we would discuss clothing. It wasn't a yes, no answer for me. It was a try it on. What do you think about it? How do you feel in it? Do you feel even... comfy wearing that to school? We would talk about it. And so I'm not an overthinker when it, it's whatever you feel comfortable. And I don't necessarily um, go with what this woman says. She says, I'm not willing to send a silent message to other people think that I'm cool with them thinking about, about sexualizing a girl, and I don't go I that think far. This area right here, like a little sure. cutout right here, sure. is that sexualizing yes. young girls? Yeah, sure. According I to mean, her. according to some people, and even off the shoulders, right? But I don't know if you, you, we have our own autonomy of our body, and so sending a silent message, quote unquote, um, saying that it's okay. I don't know if I like that. So this is thinking? my yeah. issue with the word modest is I think it's there's a judgment call that comes with that word and we all see it differently. Mm -hmm. We all have different view of what that word means. So I think it's covered or not covered. If you want to cover that area, you should have your kids cover it. But I don't think the judgment as part of this should oh, be because for uh, other yeah. parents and kids, it's that's not totally a, fine. It's not a big deal. It just right. depends. Yes. Yeah. And I think it depends on how you did grow up. I, I didn't grow up with restrictions on this is what we are allowed to wear or not. For the most part. I mean, there was a time or two in junior high where my mom was like, oh, that skirt's a little too short. Those heels are a little too high. And I was like, got it. Put them in the backpack and I changed anyway. You're going to do what you want to do and anyway. And that's so interesting because I, I guess I grew up in a conservative family because I am very conservative. I don't usually wear, um, when I was a little kid, I would do that. And no one ever commented. My mom and dad never did. But I just assumed that whatever's proper. But um, yeah, so now I just wear what I want to wear. But I grew up in Hawaii, so we had short shorts, we had tank tops, we had all the things. Oh, so I would not have been allowed to wear that. Like, I did not grow up where that would have been okay in my house. And so I do it a little bit differently than my mom, which mm -hmm. she, that, 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 those were the rules for me growing up and my rules for my girls were different. It was, how do you feel? And we had more of a discussion about what clothing that they thought was okay to wear and what I thought, and we came to an agreement. Yeah. I think that's healthy. What do you think about some of these reactions from parents? I think retailers are trying to mature our kids too fast. Fair enough. Okay. I mean, that, um, that is adult fashion right there. I bought mm -hmm. this for my six-year-old. I think it's super cute. Um, another one says, not an overreaction at all. Why would you want to put your kids in something that I would wear for girls' night out to drink? Hmm. I don't know, you guys. I think that that's a little extreme, too. I don't know that I'm wearing that out to a night to drink. This is so eye-opening right now, though, thinking about how different we have it being boy mom or girl mom or a girl and boy mom, because I don't have to think about these things with my little dudes. They're just in their T-shirts and their sweatpants, and they're I good. I still do this with my girls. They'll say, is this too much? And I'll say, how do you feel about it? How do you feel wearing that? Mm -hmm. What do you think about it? Uh, I'm definitely not letting my kids wear something because a boy might have bad thoughts. This is yeah. about my girls and how they feel. 100%. Sure. Absolutely. As it be. And boys, we have to teach them that they need to respect women. That's yeah. our duty. Um, this woman says, I grew up in a conservative household. We had cut out and backless dresses for warm weather, but maybe a little too much for church. Yeah. Yeah, I could Fair see enough. that. Um, I think the cutouts are so cute. I would buy this for my eight year old. Um, and some people say this wasn't appropriate. I don't know. It's a fun discussion anyway. It is. Let us know what you think. We yeah. should throw this on our Lots Facebook page. Lots of opinions, page. but mm -hmm. it is really cute. I want one in my size. Okay. <laughs> so, to wear out. This, to wear out. <laughs> Maybe for Easter. I feel like that's a cute little Easter it summer dress. for Easter. So speaking of being boy mom or girl mom, this is so interesting to me. This dad hops on TikTok because he's a dad of five girls, and he says that whenever he's out with all his ladies, he gets a lot of comments. And people are trying to be cute. They're trying to be funny. But what they say is, surrounded by women, I feel so sorry for you. You. Oh. And he says, okay, we need to stop doing that. First of all, my girls are older. They're like eight and 10 and up. And he's like, they can understand what you're saying. That doesn't make them feel good to hear that. And he said, that joke is so old. It's not funny. He's like, I don't like it. I love being a girl dad. And can we just stop? And I thought, oh, hold on. 
I've actually had that. On the other end, you know, I had my dog who was a boy. I had significant others who are men. I have my two boys. I'm always surrounded by boys. You're and people, outnumbered. And people occasionally go, you need a girl. And I think, but I don't. Says who? I don't want one. Why do you think to say those things? So I just think you have to be careful with those comments. It's one thing to know me well and say, would you have wanted one too? And I'm like, I think I'm but good. Here's what I think. I think a lot of times we go negative and people don't really think about what they say when they say it. They're just making conversation. But why not make it positive and say, oh my gosh, you're so lucky. That's incredible. You have five girls. I know so yeah. many girl dads yep. out there. They just own it and rock being that girl dad. I mean, yeah. my ex-husband loved his two daughters. Yep. Never there was a time that he thought, I wish I had a son. He loved those girls, but I think way back when that was the thing for dads. You need your boy. Did you get well, your boy? And that's and why I'm saying now. people it's are changed. just say what they want to, and it's like, that's great embracing, and let's be positive about yeah, it. It is such an outdated mm -hmm. comment, and you're right, saying I feel sorry for you, and you're what like, the but I love my team and my tribe. I do yeah. feel sorry for you that you have bugs at your house. I have a tarantula and I'm going to bring I it in. I can't believe you. Do <laughs> you need to bring, meet it. Do not bring that She's in. Cute. Boy or girl? Girl. Oh, girl. Yes. <laughs> There's your girl. Thanks for watching GTU, everybody. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Have a great day.